What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush. Let's talk Jets. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Uh, Monday was definitely interesting for agency as this, it started at noon and a lot of moves were being made and none by the Jets. And panic was quickly setting in for a good part of the fan base on social media where you're seeing all the top offensive guards get signed. You see a couple quarterbacks get signed. All these moves being made. And then you have Connor Hughes telling everybody the Jets are not going to spend big. They have a number. They're going to stick to it. And they have a plan. And you're like, man, what are we doing in a win now year? You know, are we going to be aggressive? Do, do the, you know, what's, do players still want to come here? Then there's like, do the Jets even have money to pay them? All these different things. But at the end of the day, it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. You got to, you cannot always rely on the first day of free agency, especially with Joe Douglas. Say three, four, five days. Then you have right before the draft moves are made. You have June 1st cuts, everything else. It all comes down to what's the final roster coming going into training camp in August. Doesn't really matter what's going on in March. It's just it just pieces to the puzzle, right? So yesterday, when when Jacoby Brissett signed with the Patriots and Gardner Minshew went to the Colts, I honestly wasn't surprised. I'm not the Colts, the Raiders. I honestly wasn't surprised because it came down to playing time. These guys got a, t a taste of playing last year. They want a chance to play this year. If you if you're assuming Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, they probably won't see the field at all at the Jets. So they want an opportunity to play. They got it. Wasn't surprised at all. Once uh, Brissett went to the Patriots, I immediately pivoted to Tyrod Taylor and Ryan Tannehill because that's kind of what fits the Jets' mold. And they got Tyrod Taylor, who I've actually always liked. He's been so unfortunate with injuries throughout his career, especially out with the Chargers. But um, you saw him. I saw him firsthand with the Giants. So I think he's turning what. 30, 34, he's 34 years old, turning 35 years old, mobile quarterback. The most important thing, it's a two-year deal, $18 million, which is very um, – fits. I mean, that's not it's not a big spend. You wish they did that last year. But I like that it was two years because you have, in my opinion, Rodgers going to play two more years. You have Tyrod here two years. If Rodgers happens to retire this year, unless you have a Band-Aid for next year. So that helps out. But – he, he's, a, he's a legitimate backup quarterback that's a significant upgrade with the Jets, anything the Jets have had. So that's a good thing. Um, you watching him play with the Giants, like I said, he he can win you games. If you're if you're like in a tough spot, you have confidence that he can actually win you games. If he has to play six or seven games, you get a little nervous. But I think if you're a two or three game stretch with, with Rodgers out, I think you feel comfortable, Taylor. Um, he makes some, some dumb decisions. I mean, you saw last year the Giants against the Bills. And he, sometimes he holds on the ball too long and takes some big sacks. But also he has the chance to throw an 80-yard bomb as well. So all in all, I think it's a good move for the Jets, man. I mean, this is the, the right money, the right the right player at the right time. So you can't get mad about it. Um, and in addition, the Jets also added line help too, where the biggest thing is offensive line. So they go out and they get John Simpson, the guard from the Ravens. I got to be honest with you, I didn't know a lot about him. All the research I was doing was on different players. So I did a little bit. He's going to be your starting left guard. He played all all 19 games last year at the Ravens. Um, he's a very physical player, tenacious. I saw the film thing. Uh, Chris Long was talking about how he loves his attitude, his mindset. He's a hard worker. He's relentless. So he fits, he fits that nasty mold as a lineman, which you like. He's a player that's getting better every year, which is good, too. He's earning his spot. He earned his first big payday. Uh, I think it was, what, two years, $18 million again, so it's not a big spend. So if you look at Tomlinson, to Simpson, it's younger, cheaper, and they, and hopefully he's a better. I mean, that's the hope at least, right? Um, he, the one thing you looked at is the big, the big uh, I guess, negative for him right now is penalties. A lot of holding penalties. I think he led the Ravens in penalties. And I think, I think it was like, what, six holding penalties and 11 penalties or all these different things. But penalties are a concern. Um, but he only gave up one sack. So then you think, well, is the holding preventing the sack? You know, like, who knows? So, but I mean, listen, at this point, we, you got to hope it works out. If he's going to play left guard, that means Elijah Vera Tucker is going to stay at right guard or go to right tackle. And then you hope that this coaching staff knows what they're doing and can coach him up. Whether that happens or not, I'm not going to talk a lot about him. I'm just saying what I read and what I know. I'm not like an like a all-22 guy that's going to study his tape. The last move the Jets made was getting Kinlaw from the 49ers. Salah's got ties to him. He, you know, he, he's reunited with him. Another young player, I think he's, what, 26 years old. And this move reminds me a lot of the Solomon Thomas move when the Jets first got him. It's like he's a first-round pick with the 49ers. Disappointing, you know, great athlete, but disappointing with, you know, knee injuries and just didn't didn't glue up to that first-round pick. And then it's like he he was healthy all year last year. He showed some really good things. I think, if anything, he's a rotational piece, like more of a pass rusher guy, kind of like the Quentin Jefferson mode. But because according to everything you see, he's not a good, he's not very good against the run. But I guess, you know, with the Jets and the way Salah runs his defense, you need a lot of pieces. 
I still would bring back Solomon Thomas. And if you can bring back Quentin Jefferson, or I would, I would do that as well. You need that run-stuffing big guy in the middle to keep this defense going. But in terms of the move, you got to trust Sal on this one, like knowing the player, know what he can get out of him. So um, trying to think what else here. I wrote a bunch of notes down. It's also three o'clock in the morning, so uh, I'm I'm curious to see what happens here. I honestly think the Jets still have a big splash number two left in him. I think they have made guys. There, there's a sight center. It could be a Ridley. Could be Tyron Smith. I mean, this video is being made at three o'clock in the morning, so they could be gone by the time you watch this. But I think they still have the ability to make a big power move. If they really want to. And if not, they can maybe wait it out and see, if, you know, second wave of free agency. Or it could be before the draft or these big cuts. I mean, you look at last year, they got – I know Dalvin Cook signing sucked, but they had the ability to sign a guy like that when these players um, become free. So, which is interesting start to free agency. Um, you know, I don't – my expectations were kind of tampered a little bit because I'm just kind of not really sure the state of the Jets and what the league-wide perception of this team is going forward. Then you, that's where you want to see if you can get these big guys because right now the Jets are – Tyrod got good money, but Simpson was a, a young player that's got a lot to prove getting decent money. These aren't like marquee signings right now. So can the Jets land that marquee name to add to the piece, add to the puzzle? It, to me, obviously, it'd be you know big-time big left tackle or wide receiver. But uh, we'll see what happens. Talk to you guys later.